Shalom Church, welcome back to Chosen Treasure. My name is Benjamin Daniel. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this day. And I hope everybody's doing well and having a pleasant week ahead and also have a pleasant week before you also too. And I'll pray that this month of June will be a time of blessing, of anointing, of the Lord's breakthrough and the Lord's favor and goodness and His grace and His faithfulness upon you and your family. So today, I got another book review talking about the end times and the last days that we're living in. And you probably noticed that it's happening all across the world, even God-hating, anti-Christian, Christian, Christian uh, news channels, not just Christian news channels, but just secular pagan news channels are talking about end times and the last days that we're living in. So where does that leave us as the body of Christ, the church? Do we ignore or do we get into it or do we keep it balanced? I like to keep it balanced. I think ignoring this is very, very dangerous and very detrimental because the Lord wants us to know what is going to be happening in the future. He has revealed it through his word, and we are so privileged to have it today. So this book is called The Nonprofit's Guide to the End Times, written, illustrated by Todd Hampson. Todd Hampson uh, is a prolific writer and illustrator. He's got a lot of other books related to end times. And the last days, he also has a podcast with Jeff Kinley, and he has an Instagram page, and he also comes on other YouTube channels and Christian-related channels. So you could check out uh, these books online. He's got others called The Nonprofit's Guide to Revelation, The Nonprofit's Guide to Spiritual Warfare, and Chronological Guide to End Time Questions and Answers. So you got some questions, you get some answers. And it's biblical prophecy, Bible prophecy, everyone. He's using cartoony visual aspect to Weir, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I like it. This is very nice. So it, it, it's got this tag of Weir, Bible prophecy for everyone. So you could use it for small Bible study groups, probably during a church service, for Sunday school, for homeschoolers, and even for private research over there where you can look into Bible prophecy and get some answers to those important questions and those difficult questions and have discussions, not to debate, not to argue, not to contend, but to have a meaningful discussion where the body of Christ is edified and built up. So it cuts through the complexity and the confusion. It's entertaining and user-friendly. It's full of fascinating visuals and timelines and charts. So on the back of here, uh, it says, I believe Jesus returned. What more do I need to know? And let's go to this guy over here. Who is he? All right. Almost looks like a Moses figure. And I'll just call him Bob. <laughs> okay. The end is near slash here. No. Definitely going to happen at some point in the future. And yep. He's got that look on his face. So right at the back. Do you avoid studying books of the Bible like Revelation, Ezekiel? Does it feel like words such as ap uh, <laughs> apocalypse and rapture and Armageddon? not the movie, fly right over your head. You're not alone. It is common to dismiss this and other topics related to Bible prophecy as irrelevant and well too complicated. And not so. So this book is prepared to be used and to be a blessing in an entertaining and meaningful way. It's not just the cartoony visuals over here, but it's going to be a lot more than that. So let's get into it. Uh, it came out in 2018 by Harvest Publishers, Harvest House Publishers, and these are the contents of yours. So let me just get that focused a little bit closer. All right, part one, the definition, nature and importance of Bible prophecy. What is Bible prophecy? Why is it important? Does prophecy prove divine authorship? What are the practical benefits of studying Bible prophecy? My wife and I did a Bible prophecy last day's end times Q&A couple of months back we got three parts in it part one part two part three if you get time i would encourage you please go and check those videos out and it has key terms defined the four eschatological methods of four views three views of the rapture five reasons to believe in what my wife and i and my family believe in the pre-tribulation view of the rapture according to scripture three views of the millennium depending on your denomination also too so there's a pre and there's a mid and there's a post and there's a fourth one and this is another one talking about the keys to watching God's plan unfold. It talks about Daniel's visions, the Olivet Discourse, John's revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ to John. And it goes into modern day, right from scripture into modern day relevance. The super sign Israel, 
Yes, all eyes on Israel. I would say all eyes on the God of Israel. That's it. Geopolitical signs, what's happening in the nations. Nature. Ooh. <laughs> you talk about climate change. Guess what's going to be happening for seven years in the Great Tribulation? It's going to get really wild and nasty. It talks about spiritual signs, spiritual warfare, demonic influence. It's just getting crazy out there. The signs of culture. What's happening to our culture today? We're replacing the Word of God and godly principles with cultural principles, which are totally antichrist. The signs of technology, AI this, AI that, AI everywhere. It's happening. The signs of convergence. Humanity plus AI is going to create humanity 2.0, super duper humans. That's happening. And the safest place to be is in Jesus Christ and how should we live. So we go into uh, part one. I'm not going to go through all the pages, but I want to just show you this guy here, Mr. Bob. I am the nonprofit in case you were wondering. So he's got thick eyebrows, <laughs> suitable for compassion or condemnation. So Check your eyebrows today, please. I'm sure you've got mirrors. Are they uh, compassionate eyebrows or condemning eyebrows? Just for profits, be it coloring. A strap, duh. Uh, John the Baptist inspired hair. I'm thinking, what is the be it coloring going to be? My goatee's gray, so uh, I don't know if it's going to be brown. <laughs> Lightweight sandwich bowed for an all-day wear. Yep, I'm sure it's recyclable. Non-toxic, <laughs> breathable sackcloth, simulated garment rips, and genuine fake leather sandals. All right. I wonder which market. You know, you get a lot of those made-in-China goods over there. <laughs> Show you got those sandals over there. All right. So what is Bible prophecy and why is it important? Give some stats over here. 27 to 33% is prophecy. 10,000 verses. 10,000 plus verses. 50% fulfilled. 50% yet to come. Have you ever really thought about the truth contained in this verse? The verse over here is from Acts 1.1, 1, 1, where the Lord Jesus ascends to sit at the right hand of the Father, and the angels say, Men of Galilee, why are you looking up? He's coming back the same way. And you would be thinking, how is the Lord Jesus going to be coming back? So there's a lot of scripture references here. And just like John the Baptist, Mr. Bob says, Repent. And it's an interesting book. I'm not going to go through page by page. It talks about end time events related to what's happening in the world in modern day terminology. We look at what is the condition of our world today. Terrorism, global refugee crisis, international financial stability, division in America. This book came out in 2018. Now what's happening in 2024 in that part of the world is nasty. There's a saying that the, we, the world is going in a handbasket to hell. So there's a whole earth in an ant basket, and that's the fires of hell. And I pray and hope that many of your family members, if they're not born again, this is the right time to preach to them and get them saved. Talks about diseases, pestilences, oh, we got a whole bunch of them, a lot of pandemics and scandemics. Get ready. They're planning new ones now. Um, Record-breaking natural disaster, racial tensions, genocide, mass shootings, civil war. Persecution of Christians has risen up. Severe persecution. Even Western nations are feeling the heat right now. People selling body parts. Well, well the society yawns. Okay, Dangerous countries getting nukes. Cyber warfare. Occultism. Yes, spiritism on display openly. We know what month we've entered into June, so get ready for an onslaught of such perversion and such fornication that's going to be in our faces. And talks about the decline of America. Well, I could say, honestly... The U.S. is finished. It's over. There's nothing much to say about it. And it talks about breaking news. Church, we have breaking news every day. We have the Word of God. We have this Holy Spirit of God. We don't need to turn to fake CNN or ABC or any of those news channels. We get it right here. Earthquakes, flooding, Mideast Mid mess, nuclear nuttiness, economic meltdown looms, financial instability, and a call for a one-world currency, one-world government. That's a solution. Let's make everything one world. Everybody going to be holding her hands singing Kumbaya. Right, so breaking news is officially cray-cray out there and time to freak out. Not for the Church of Christ. No, not for the body of Christ. And look at the pop culture media trends. Okay, we got, let me get that there and focus. Eight, 900 plus 
apocalyptic movies. I have problems sometimes pronouncing that. 88 apocalyptic TV shows. A lot more since then. Have you noticed a lot of TV shows and movies to do with aliens and abductions and visitations? Wow, we just thought the X-Files was crazy, but a lot of that stuff is happening right now. And yeah, people building bunkers. People used to think this was just a conspiracy theory, that the rich, the powerful, the billionaires, the millionaires, the Elon Musks and the Jeff Bezos and the Bill Gates of the world, they got bunkers. They all got it ready. Enjoy the end of the world in style. Nuclear wars, zombie attacks, pestilence, killer bees, no problem. Contact us today. So... It's happening. Okay. I don't want to freak you out, so let's just get into it. And it this talks about answers to Bible, basic questions about Bible prophecy. It talks about what we look at the chart of year, creation, the first coming, the Lord Jesus, the rapture of the church, the second coming at the end of the tribulation, and the start of the thousand year millennium. Depending on your view, there are four views uh, regarding the the rapture of the church and eschatological views and i won't get into that we already spoke about that in our previous videos and it talks about space time and matter they're beautiful graphics over here and it talks about world events that have been prophesied in scripture let's go into some of them right now four empires all destroyed destruction destruction jewish people will be dispersed twice as much Israel will be reborn in a day after a long time, 1948, and world wars. Everything that scripture spoke about it thousands of years ago is happening today. Knowledge and travel would greatly increase. Look at the internet. Look at WhatsApp. Look at the power of AI today. Yeah. Do we need a brain check or a code check? <laughs> That's a good one. All right. And it talks about the end. 1,000 plus four prophecies, 500 already fulfilled. So... Uh, Todd Hampson goes into this, and it goes on into beautiful facts over here, and again, an amazing resource. It's not a replacement, it's a resource that you could use for Bible study, small Bible study groups, for preaching, for teaching, for young children, young adults, and to get a lot of difficult questions out of the way. How does prophecy prove divine authorship? It proves that God is God. He says what He says, and what He says will come to pass there's no point arguing about that, so that's it. And it talks about logic in the Bible. It goes into evidences for the Christian faith, a book that foretells the future accurately. No other religious book can tell the future so accurately. And we have it in the Word of God, the Holy Bible. It talks about Nebuchadnezzar's dream and Daniel's interpretation on Daniel chapter 2. All these are gone. We're getting a revived empire. That's what we're going to be looking into. That's going to happen soon. And it talks about the messianic prophecies, the coming of our Lord Jesus. Those are called messianic. 26 of them are being already done and fulfilled. Many more to come when the Lord comes back for his church. And fulfilled prophecy. It talks about some quick facts. So he's got a lot of this spread out. A lot of visuals, especially to do with quick facts and more examples. All right, so what are the practical benefits of studying Bible prophecy? Three practical benefits. Discipleship to grow spiritually, your own walk with the Lord Jesus, evangelism, telling about, telling others about the, the gift of salvation, and a biblical worldview because today we have an understanding of the secular worldview which wants to destroy the biblical worldview Everything that God has said is holy. They want to twist it around, call good evil and evil good. So we need to understand a biblical worldview. And how do we get it? By studying end times Bible prophecy. Understanding the world in the light of biblical truth. Amazing. And we grow spiritually mature. And it talks about theological terms over there. Fine. And again, beautiful graphics. Then we come to part two, the building blocks of Bible prophecy. So it goes on all the way here. I won't get into much of this over here. This is an amazing book. If you can get it, uh, we got this from Amazon India. If you can get it from right here in India, and you could probably pick this up over here. I would definitely recommend something like this. And in the end, it comes down to parting words 
and it talks about how should we live during these last days. That's very, very important. How should we live? And let me just look into this. Yeah, lots of scripture verses over here. How should we live? A couple of them over here. Philippians 3, 13 to 14. Galatians 6 to 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And assembly of saints. And if you love each other, we know that we're disciples of Christ. And Habakkuk 2, 3 talks about the appointed time. So this is it, church. The Non-Prophet's Guide to the End Times by Todd Hampson, illustrated and written by him. It's a beautiful book, amazing Bible prophecy reference guide for all age groups. I've been using a little bit this, a little bit of this for my daughter, and it's been such a good blessing. And I and I enjoy reading it. I, I have not finished reading it, and I'm probably gonna get to it. So that's it. I have more book reviews coming up. And I pray that everybody will have a blessed week ahead of them, a Christ-centered week where you will grow spiritually and mature in the faith that was once passed on to you and that you will become a blessing to others to minister and preach and to encourage the body of Christ and even non-believers and unbelievers and get into Bible prophecy. Prophecy is given to us. I'm not talking about the Lord told me to tell you that kind of prophecy where a lot of people release a lot of false prophecies. Now I'm talking about Bible prophecy from God himself. has been given to us to prepare us, not to scare us, not to bring fear mongering in the body of Christ, but to edify and equip the body of Christ. So have a blessed day ahead of you, and Lord, watch over you. Shalom, church. Look into this. Take care. Bye-bye.